Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Rankin. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about Kotlin and we're going to build on what we've seen in past videos in terms of output and we're going to introduce how you can get input into your Kotlin programs. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so as you can see, I've got an IntelliJ project already set up. So we're going to create our main function and we'll create a quick variable so we'll do something like uh, var x is equal to um, 12 okay so that's going to create an integer variable and we can print that out on a single line by just doing print x right so this will print on a single line right? but then if i decided to print something else it's going to follow. It's going to stay on that same line. So a little bit of review here from a previous video. Let's go ahead and build this and run it. So that way you can see what I'm talking about in terms of the output. So you're going to see one, two, three, three is what's going to happen here. So there it is. One, two, three, three. Why? Well, X contains 12 and print just prints the value, right? The cursor doesn't move to the next line. And so when you see print, 33 on the next line, then that 12 is going to go, or that 33 is going to follow that 12 immediately. That's right. So this immediately follows. Okay. So if we wanted to move the cursor to the next line, we got to use the print line function. Now we can use the print line function just to move the cursor to the next line. Okay. And then from there, we could print out something else. We could say, well, hello world, for example. Okay. And so now what we're going to see is we'll see, you know, the 12 and the 33 right next to each other, but then the cursor is going to move to the next line. And then we're going to see, um, hello world immediately afterwards, right? So there's the one, two, three, three, and then there's the hello world. Okay. So, um, that's what the print, line does okay so let's look at another example here and let us say that i created another variable call it i and we'll assign to that um you know the integer two why not okay and then we're going to go ahead and do a print line okay and uh, i'm going to put in here a little string and i'm going to say something like you know, I contains what, right? Now, the thing is, is like, if you're a Python person, you might be thinking, well, I can do something like this and that's gonna work um, just fine, right? But no, it doesn't work like that in Kotlin because check it out, you've got the squiggles under there indicating bad stuff. The print functions can only take a single argument. Okay, so how do you do something like, you know, if you wanted to have something on the screen that looks like this, what if you wanted to say, I contains two? Okay, that's what we're looking at here. Well, you've got a couple of options. One would be to use print, okay, and then that's going to put the I contains in a space on a single line. And then on the next statement, you could do something like print line um, I, okay, and then we'll print line goodbye, just so you can see how it all works out. So you could do something like that, right? So this is going to print I contains space. Right, but the cursor doesn't move the next line because print is, you know, doesn't work that way. It just leaves the cursor where it was when you're done printing that last character. But then we'll execute the next statement, which is print line I. And so then that'll put a two and then move the cursor to the next line. And then with our statement in uh, line seven here, then, um, you know, we'll print goodbye and we'll be done. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And then we'll show you another way or I'll show you another way that you can do this. Because there's, there's always more than one way of doing something in any programming language, isn't there? It's um, just a matter of learning the different ways, what your preferred way of doing something is, and that sort of thing. So let me scroll back up here. You can see there's the I contains two and the goodbye, just like I said. So that's one way of doing it. Okay, let's look at another way of doing it. And that would be something like this. Okay, so you can have, you can use like a, a dollar sign as a kind of an escape sequence almost. So you can say something like I contains, and then you can put the little dollar sign there, and then you put I, okay? And so what's gonna happen is, is that 
and this is going to get replaced that star i will get replaced with two okay so you're going to see that you've got multiple ways of doing things and most programmers learn a subset of things that you can do in any particular programming language and um you know, the, the better you become with the language, the more you know about the language, the more experience, then the more stuff that you know, right? The more different ways you can have, have um, the more way, different ways you know of how to do stuff. So you can see that that says now I contains two. Okay, so now let's look at a couple different ways that we can get input. The first way is going to be to use the read line function, okay? and Important thing to note about this is that read line returns a string. Okay, so let's go ahead and see an example of using this. So we'll go ahead and we'll prompt the user to enter their name. Enter your name. Okay, and then from there, what we're gonna do is we're going to store it. And we'll store it in a variable called name. Okay, and we'll invoke the read line function. Okay, now doing that should work great. And then we will say something silly like greetings uh, name okay something just like that and so let's go ahead and test it now this is pretty straightforward right there's nothing there's nothing too tricky about this because you know what we're working with is actual strings so we're gonna have a string that gets read in and we're gonna print out a string back at the user so it shouldn't be too surprising right so there you go greetings Hank okay fine now the problem comes if you try to do something with numbers right you think you're doing something with numbers so you know let's say that we wanted to write a program that's going to add, ask the user for two numbers and then add them together and display the sum something like that you could have something that looks like this you could say print enter a number okay you have something that looks like that fine and then you create your variable here variable x equals read line Okay, but remember, read line returns a string. Okay, that's the, that's a key component here. So we'll say enter another number. Okay, and then we'll say var y equals read line. Okay, and then you're thinking, well, I'm going to do a total here. I'm going to add them up. So you do something like and, and tell the person the 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 answer, the sum. So you might say something like the sum is. Okay, and inside of here we can do a little bit of arithmetic okay it's a little bit more bonus syntax for you okay so you were thinking oh well you know if say the user enters five and the and then the user enters two then what we should see is the sum is seven right because we're adding up x and y and x contains five and y contains two so what's going on what's going to be the the problem here well, take a look at the sum. What's reported? The sum is 52? No, I mean, look at the plus. I got the plus there. It should be 7, right? Well, the problem here is that x is a string. y is a string because read line returns strings. So what was actually stored in x was the string 5 when I typed 5. And what was actually stored in y is the string 2. So when you say x plus y, what you're doing is a concatenation operation. So the result of x plus y is the string 52. Okay, so we don't want that. If we want to do some actual addition, then we have to do something um, different. Okay, so we would have to do something like convert that string to an actual um, integer. Okay, so if we, if we can do that, then we can do some arithmetic operations on it. So we might do something like this, like um, var um, xx equals x dot, okay, x dot um, to um, integer, okay, x dot to integer. Okay, and then we can do with the Y a similar kind of thing. We'll fix that error here in just a second. So we could do something like um, var yy equals y.2int. 
Okay, now we've got an error here. And what is this error? Okay, what this error is, is it's indicating that, hey, you know, it's possible that X might have had null in it, right? Because if the user just hit enter when they were prompted, well, then there's nothing to convert, right? So what we can do is we can put a couple exclamation points up here. And that is going to guarantee that you know, no null can be accepted. And we'll put a couple exclamation points there um, as well. Okay, so that's going to guarantee that we're not stuck with, with, a, with a null value. Okay, so now if everything goes right, if everything is good, then we're going to be able to, right? Um, oh, forgot one point, forgot one thing. I was going to say, if everything's right, it still says 32, right? Well, that's because I forgot to change what we're adding. We're adding the converted strings, right? So Y right here is going to, going to contain the um, converted Y, and then uh, XX is going to contain the converted X. So let's try that one more time. And um, should work. It should work. So, you know, and that's the thing too. I mean, you know, when you're programming and stuff, um, you know, you're going to make mistakes from time to time, just like I did right there. You, you, that never goes away. So anyway, let's try it. That's why you always have to test. Five and two. So now you can see that the sum is seven. Okay. So fantastic, right? So we're, we're in business. So let's look at one final way that we can read data in. Okay, so another way of being able to read data from the keyboard is to use the Java scanner object. Okay, so the Java scanner object, we're gonna have to go up here and import something from Java. So we'll do java.util.scanner. Okay, so by doing that, it gives us access to the scanner object, and then we can instantiate one of those guys. So we'll do val s for scanner, equals scanner and we have to pass an argument and those of you who are java people this is going to look very familiar right because it's java essentially so we're going to instantiate a scanner object and here we have to say where are we scanning from so what we're, where we're scanning from is we're scanning from the uh, standard input okay which is the keyboard so uh, now that we have that we can use methods on the scanner object to read in stuff just like you can in Java. So let's go ahead and have our prompt again. So we'll do um, print enter your name. Okay, and then we will create a variable just like we did before our name uh, equals and then we're going to say um, s dot next Okay, s.next, that's going to grab the next string. Okay, and then we'll print out greetings. Okay, just like we did before. Okay, with read line. So let's go ahead and test it. And so, I mean, what we're seeing here is that, you know, you've got multiple ways of doing things. You always have multiple ways of doing things in, in programming languages. Okay, so let's go ahead and type in my name. Okay, and you can see there's the greetings Hank. Okay, now that next method returns a string. Okay, so we could be dealing with the same types of problems if we want to um, add numbers. So let's take a look at how to deal with that. See how we would deal with a program that has to um, add two numbers together. So we'll have our we'll have our prompt again. Enter a number. Okay, and then we'll have um, val x is equal to s dot, but instead of next, which is for a string, we'll do next int. Okay, we'll do next int. So by doing that, that's going to read in whatever the user types and then attempt to convert it to an integer. Okay, and so then we'll do the same thing. Enter another number. Or a similar thing anyway. Val y equals s dot next int. So next int kind of reads the string and converts it at the same time. So then we'll do print line. 
the sum is, and we'll do the same kind of trick that we did before, x plus y. I mean, maybe I should do something a little bit different, right? Because you've seen that. So we'll do we'll do a z. Okay, so we'll create a value z equals x plus y. Just to show you something a little bit different. Okay. All right. So let's uh, get that out of the way so you can actually see the code. So there's our there's our function main. All right. And I'm using that scanner object. And I'm asking the user for a number. I'm going to read it in. And it's going to be returned as an integer assigned to x. I'm going to ask them for the next number. That's going to be read in. Right. That's going to be read in and returned as an integer to y. Then I'm going to add those two numbers together. It's going to be stored in z. And then I'm going to tell you what the sum is. So let's take a look at it and um, you know, see, see what we get. You know, it shouldn't be too big of a problem. It should be hopefully not too complicated for you. So 88, enter, 12, enter. There we go, 100. All right, so there you go. That should about do it. Um, there's all kinds of, you know, I have next int here. We saw next for strings. You've got um, next int, next double, next float, for example. So you have all kinds of options. And when you hit that dot operator uh, pop-up menu, right, a context menu pops up and allows you to choose uh, from all the different options that you, that you have. But that's the basics. That's everything I wanted to cover in this video to give you an idea, a better idea of how you can get some input and how you can get some output. Okay, so as usual, if you're a student of mine, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me, stop by my office hours, or log in and hit me up on Zoom. For everybody else, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got that thumbs down as well. Please consider supporting the channel in various ways. We've got paid memberships with additional perks for as little as 99 cents a month. You can join as a subscriber. You can leave a comment. You can hit that bell so that way you'll know when the new videos are available. Most of all, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.